What's up guys, it's Mike here. Have you been searching on the web for hours looking for the perfect camera to vlog and make your videos with? Well today, I'm gonna save you a lot of time because I've spent the past six months vlogging and making videos with very different cameras and I'm here to help you make a decision today. So if this video has helped you at all or if it's funny, entertaining, or has made your day, like and subscribe. Really, people always say that equipment doesn't matter, content is king, which is true. However, I know that if tools fit you well and are easy to use, you will use it more often and therefore you have more content. At first I thought these were cameras that were good for everything so I use them all for vlogging but you know soon after trial and error I found that there are very different uses for each type of camera. There's a bunch of specs out there about all these cameras and I'm not here to tell you the numbers because I can't simply remember all the numbers on hand. You can search them up at any time but I'm here to tell you what I use them for, what I love, what I hate and what they're best for. So after hours of watching reviews I found one funny thing about them. They weren't filming using the camera they were talking about so I didn't know what it looked like, what it sounded like and how it performed. So in this video I'm going to be using the camera to film when I'm talking about it so you can see the three very important criteria that I always look for in a camera. The first one is image stabilization, the second one is audio, and the third one is autofocus and clarity. These are the things that make and break a camera that I use because if either one of them is compromised, it's garbage. It's a no-no. So I'm going to start off with an action camera which is the GoPro and then move on to the compact camera which is G7X and then a DSLR that I'm using which is G85. So to start things off, Okay, so this is the GoPro and uh, I'm walking around right now. So notice the image stabilization. It's buttery smooth. There's digital stabilization inside and that's really important if you're vlogging. And uh, notice how wide this is too. GoPros are made to be super wide and this is in linear mode so that the side isn't distorted. It's really good in really bright settings. So outdoors is great. Just notice how small this thing is. It can fit in a pocket no problem. It's very conspicuous. Also, you can film 4K and in 2.7K and all that good stuff. So it gets really sharp and you get a lot of clarity. And and it's a really good action camera, it's very rugged, and it's even waterproof. So I use it for really dangerous things where I don't really care about the camera. So even if I do stuff like this, and not scared of it breaking. And that's the best thing about this camera, it's not gonna break when you drop it. So the biggest thing about this camera that I hate is the audio, and you probably noticed that when I switched, because you can hear a lot of wind sounds right now, and it's great that I'm filming outdoors so you can know that. It still works, but for serious vlogging, I don't really think it works. Of course, you can add a dongle to it and use a mic, but the dongle is ridiculously long and it's not convenient, because when I'm filming, I just wanna take it out of my bag, turn it on, press record. So another big thing is that it doesn't have a screen. I don't know what this looks like right now, how, what I'm filming, but I know everything's clear and it has a super wide lens. That's the only thing I kind of mix up for it, but not really. And you can always attach it to a Bluetooth device, but it takes too long to do that. So I don't know how this looks like until I actually edit. I don't want to worry if I got the footage or not. I just want something that I can rely on so I don't have to refilm. So the conclusion for the GoPro is that it's best to use it when there's high stakes situations where you might break your camera. The GoPro isn't going to break. Everything is replaceable, it's modular. You can replace little gates, even the lens you can replace. So it's really good for that and only that. And now we're going to switch to the G7 next. This is the G7X, it's one of my favorite cameras. The image stabilization is buttery smooth, so if I walk a bit faster, you can still see that it's all digitally stabilized, and I don't know how it does this. This has the best stabilization out of the three cameras, and the DSLR has a dual IS, but I think the image stabilization on this is still better. And the autofocus is super fast, so if we focus on different things like that, and then back to my face, it's super sharp and it has one of the best 1080p's ever. So sadly there's no 4K on this, but from other reviews out there, you can scale the 1080 to 4K and it still looks crisp. And also because of its form factor, this is something that's really good for traveling if you want to put it in your pocket or in your bag and take it out very quickly. Because when you're traveling, you don't want to have a big DSLR hanging out. That people might steal it or you're like people might knock it over when you're at restaurants. So it's very tough that way. So a compact camera like this will work sweet. Now, these are the things that I hate about this camera. So this this camera again doesn't have an audio input so it's not that good in terms of if there's wind like this there might be some wind noise and you can always add a muff on top but then it kind of blocks the screen but this camera would be really good for vlogging if you're only doing things that are really close it's great for that but if your subject is a lot farther like this it might be hard to hear so that's why having a external mic is a lot better than the internal mic so something I don't like about this camera or compacts in general the exterior is pretty strong uh, you can beat up the camera and stuff but a lens is very delicate and dust gets in or you drop it while the camera is on and the lens is out it's game over for the whole system you have to change the whole thing and that's like 800 or 900 bucks down the toilet 
Now this camera is more on the expensive side. You're paying for the form factor. It's really compact because you can do almost everything that a DSLR can. But all the functions, everything is inside the camera itself. So you have to press and press and press until you get to a certain function that you want to customize. So in conclusion, this would be the best travel or vlogger camera. It's really good if you're very close, the audio will catch you. You're always in focus and uh, you get that really nice blur in the background. And if you just want to take it out of your pocket and start shooting right away, this is like the magic camera that does everything you want to and it's very easy to use so I would highly recommend that if vlogging is your only thing and that's about it for G7X and now on to the Lumix G85 so this is a G85 and we're actually on the dock now and there's a lot of wind here and the microphone should capture my voice still pretty well because uh, I'm using the Rode Video Micro and it has a wind muff on it so it's pretty good and that's why having a DSLR with a mic input is great for vlogging and also there's a flip out screen as you can see in my glasses it's on the side so I can always see what I'm filming and I know exactly what I will have when I'm editing. So this is the sound with the wind muff on and now this is the sound with the wind muff off, so you can hear a lot of wind noise and I bet you that the GoPro, the G7X, the sound would be even worse than this or the same because uh, wind has a lot of sounds. So we're back on the microphone now. The image stabilization is really good. It has image stabilization with the lens and in the body as well, so it's dual stabilized, so it's usually silky smooth. The really cool thing about the Lumis G85 is that it's weatherproof. It's dust proof, it's water resistant, so you can be in the rain with it and it's all good. And it's built like a tank, so I dropped it a few times. It's made of really hard steel, and I, it was okay. And even if you do break the lens or the body, they are both replaceable. So if either one breaks, you just replace the other, and you don't have to replace the whole system. And that's the really cool thing. And with the interchangeable lens, you can change it to have different effects. And with the DSLR, there's buttons all over the body, so if you want to customize or change the setting really quickly, this camera is the one for you. Especially if you are doing kind of cinematic shots or filming, and you need different kind of settings with manual focus you can do all that really quickly the bad part about it is that it's really big and clunky so that when you're at dinner you always have to put it on a table or put it in the bag which takes a long time to do it's not as convenient as you want it's something that you want to have when you're out all day and you know you're gonna be out all day so you're gonna be carrying it all day not taking it in and out of your bag you're gonna build some real muscle from holding the camera all day long and uh, you know what it's kind of worth it for the quality of footage that I get I'm not worried about the audio I'm not worried about the focus the autofocus is really good as well so yeah and this is the low light it's not that bad it adjusts pretty fast and another thing I hate about like DSLRs are how much the lens costs they cost a thousand dollars plus each for the good ones and man that's like almost another camera that you can buy so if you have the cash and you want to have specific kind of looks go for a DSLR otherwise a compact camera is fine if you're vlogging but the DSLR can do vlogging and a whole bunch of other stuff and that's why out of the three, I think this is the best bang for the buck. You get a lot of functionality, you get a lot of features, just a great camera to get you started with. And it's going to last you a long time as well because this can film 4K. And I don't really use 4K and 1080p is good for me, but it's kind of future proof or it's just a way to scare you to buy more expensive things. So the DSLRs, the jack of all trades is really good at everything, but not best at one thing. But it's really good if you have like paid gigs and you want to look professional because ain't no one going to pay you if you're going to be using a GoPro or a compact camera being like, I'm filming your wedding. If you want to be taken seriously, I think a DSLR is the way to go. So you know in the end, there is no best gear. There's only ones that fit you the best and allows you to shoot without worrying about if you got the shot or not, if you have to refilm, or all of the above. You want something that can help you capture your story the way that you intended, or you know, not intended, but you still caught it really professionally. And really, you can even use a phone to vlog. It has a lot of features, but the audio sucks, the camera's not that good, and uh, it's really convenient though. It does a lot of things, but I don't consider this a camera yet but soon one day a phone or something else will take over all of the cameras and we're gonna be all using the same thing to shoot with which works perfectly and today's not that day yet so really that's six months of experience compacted in one video and I hope that I helped you make a decision on what type of camera that you need to shoot the shots that you want and really that's it for now and I'll see you next time like and subscribe bye